So we are going to continue this problem right here from the previous video. This is F through I though. Same stuff over here. So um, what is the value of T? For what value is the T as a particle at rest? When you hear the word at rest, what you need to know is your velocity is zero because you're not moving. There's no rate of change. So you could look at the graph and see where your velocity is zero and that would be at zero and two. So you can know your answer right away. It would be at t equals 0 and 2 seconds would be your answer by looking at the graph. Now, if we didn't have the graph, how would we solve it? Well, what we want to do is set this equal to 0 and you solve. So let me show you that real quick. We would set um, 3t squared minus 6t equal to 0 and solve that. In order to do that, what you would do is you'd pull out a GCF of 3t giving you t minus 2 equals 0. And then you would set each factor equal to 0. And you would get the same answers. When you divide by 3 here, you get t equals 0. And when you add 2 over, you get t equals 2. So you get the same answers if you solved it algebraically or if you did it pictorially. Either way works. Now for g here, for what values of t is the particle slowing down? Now, that's a, this is a trickier one. Slowing down, well, with slowing down, you don't care about the direction of velocity, and that's what's important. For slowing down, you want the rate of change of speed, which is absolute value of V of T. And for slowing down, you want that to be getting smaller. So you want the, that, the answer to this, you want that to be negative or less than zero for slowing down, okay, for slowing down. You want the speed decreasing. You want your speed decreasing is what it's saying. Or, just so you know for other problems, in case you wanted to know when I'm speeding up, this would be for speeding up. So <clears throat> the problem is some people struggle with how do I figure out the speed on this graph? How, how do I do that? How, that doesn't make no sense. Well, if you think about what does speed mean, the absolute value of velocity. So what's the absolute value of this blue graph. Well, anything that's underneath here gets flipped upside down. That's what an absolute value does. Anything that's negative gets flipped over. So it kind of looks like that. It's the same, okay? It would be the same over here and here, but anything that's under gets flipped. So it looks like down, boop, like that, like that right there. That looks like the graph for speed. So what it wants is, if I want to slowing down, I want where the slope, the derivative of the speed is negative. So I want the slope being negative. So can you see the slope being negative right here? The slope is, it's, so it's decreasing right here. So my slope is negative from one to two. So that would be my answer. My answer for this particular problem would be on the interval one to two. Or you'd write it as, um, also you could write it from one t to two. And that would be your answer for this particular problem by looking at the absolute value, or the speed function, instead of the velocity function. Now, there is another way. Most, like, AP, AP stuff doesn't do it this way. I do it this way because it makes sense. But what most AP stuff does is they do a whole different process. And it's kind of weird, but it actually works, and it makes sense, too. But I like mine. But let me show you theirs. What they do is look at the acceleration and velocity and look at the signs that it, it, they get. So if your acceleration, if your acceleration and your velocity have different signs, meaning positive and negative, then you are slowing down. And if your acceleration and velocity at any point has the same signs, then you are speeding up. So let me show you what that means exactly. So on the interval 0 to 1, do you understand my velocities are negative and so are my acceleration? So since they have the same sign, you are speeding up. Or in our zero, interval 1 to 2, like we said, interval 1 to 2, aren't, isn't my velocity negative but my acceleration is positive? See how they have different signs? So they are slowing down. So this does work too. All right. Let me also just remind you that the reason this right here is slowing down is because the velocities are getting smaller. Do you see where this is speeding up? Because your velocities are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's called speeding up. So hopefully that helps. Next question. 
Foot values of t does the particle travel to the left? So we're talking about traveling to the left. So if we look here at the picture, weren't we starting here and we went this direction, then we stopped and turned and went this direction. So to the left, how do we know when a graph is going to the left? Well, you can see it's when the graph, when the position is dropping. So when your position is dropping. But what is the slope when the position is dropping? The slope is negative, which means the velocities are negative. So to move to the left, the velocities are supposed to be negative. So it's when the velocities are less than zero, you're going to the left. If your velocities are greater than zero, you're moving to the right in this particular situation. So look at the graph. Where are your velocities negative? Well, aren't your velocities negative from zero to two? So that would be your answer. On the interval zero to two, or you could put it zero less than t less than two seconds is when you're moving to the left. That would be to the left. Otherwise, if you look at this graph, from here on, you're going to go to the right, which means you're going to keep growing in position bigger and bigger numbers. All right, last question. For what values of t is the particle change directions? So what does change directions mean? Well, see this right here? We went this way, and then it stopped, and then we went this way. So this is a point at 1 here, you change direction. But 1 is represents position, not time. So in the time at which, what time did that happen? Where did we turn around? Well, here's what you do when you think about it. To find out change of direction, we first need to find out where the velocity is 0. Because in order to change direction, you have to stop. You must stop before you change direction. And second of all, besides being that, you also need, besides being stopping, you also need that the velocity... Um, needs to change sign. So the velocity needs to change signs, meaning positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay, so we need both. So if we look here, our velocity right here at 2 is 0. And do you see how the velocity is negative and now the velocity is positive, so it changes signs? So that means at 2 is where this went boom and turned around. So where is it? It is when t equals 2 seconds for this particular problem is when the change of directions. It's not just when the velocity is zero, because you could be moving this way and then stop and move that way some more. It just depends um, if it stops and changes directions with the velocity by these signs changing.